You mentioned um, John Lennon just a couple of minutes ago, um, and there's a cover of Working Class Hero on the new single, I believe. Mm -hmm. What does Lennon actually mean to you? Well, he plays into some of the icons that represent uh, revolution to me, and he also plays into my obsession with parallels and coincidences throughout history. Um, as I mentioned before, um, him writing Happiness is a Warm Gun um, and how that you know relates to his death, um, him writing Helter Skelter, and um, being killed in front of the Dakota, mm -hmm. uh, which is where Rosemary's Baby was filmed. Norman Polanski's wife, of course, was murdered by the Manson family. Right. So all these strange obsessions, he, he became weaved into that for me. But that song in particular has always been one of my favorite songs of which, all time. Which song? Working Class Hero. Um, so you, uh, you, you're quite interested in this, this um, well it seems as though there are some sort of connections between the white, the white album, the Tate murders, and the Hollywood Columbine thing. Do you, do you feel that? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think that, that there's a lot of parallels. There's a lot of... The, and, you know, it, it all begins to tie in together with Death Valley and Trinity where the, the first atom bomb was detonated and Adam and Eve and, uh, you know, on the record I often mention Jack or John and sometimes I'm referring to John the Baptist, John Lennon, JFK, my grandfather, a lot of Jacks that come up. Um, so there's a there's a lot of levels to be explored on the record, and I think it it'd be much more enjoyable sometimes for the listener when they explore them on their own. So I I, I don't like to delve into them too much, but mm -hmm. I think people can assume and and believe that my obsessions run pretty deep on this one so there's a lot to be taken from it what about this quote I read that you, you, you claimed that um, John Lennon had sort of brought his own death upon himself with these communist sentiments um, well I think I, I didn't mean that in a negative way that he deserved it no. uh, what, I, what I, I, I believe I was referring to was that he became a danger to the American government mm. and I wouldn't be surprised if they were responsible. I can't say that for sure obviously but I think um, anyone and, and this is how I found him relating to Kennedy and Christ is that they were all uh, had very dangerous opinions as do I mm. and it, their all, lives all ended because of their opinions as far as I can see it. So it's a matter of me acknowledging that, knowing that, and trying to um, not let my idealism, you know, lead me to my own destruction. Does that, so does that not make you a threat then? Um, it does. Well, I'm a threat as well. It does, but uh, I, I guess that's part of the trade-off that you have, mm. you have to give. You have to give up when you want, when you want to say do you get a lot of um, hate mail or abuse? Or um, I, I don't. I don't ever really come across it, but you know, you know, death threats have become quite common when we're on tour. So, yeah. do you think Mark Chapman should have been released when his parole was due uh, a few weeks ago? No, no. I think you know. If, uh, People have to be responsible for their actions, and you know he he was given a a sentence, and he should have to fulfill it. Do you think he should ever be released? Um, no, I think I think you know when you when you take someone's life, you know even if it's as simple as an eye for an eye, I think you know just you should be punished in the same way. Yeah. Um. I think Manson, strangely, is a political prisoner because the, the fact that, you know, he's he's in jail for the crime of telling other people to kill someone um, in this day and age wouldn't have happened, but because the 60s was such a time of confusion and there was a need to distract the world from the Vietnam War mm -hmm. and there was a, a need for a scapegoat, 
for the hippie generation. Um, it's, it's very strange that uh, Nixon declared him guilty during the trial. If that would have happened in this day and age, it would have been thrown out. It's, it's kind of sad to see someone like O.J. Simpson free and someone like Manson not. And not to say that Manson wasn't a dangerous person and the, and the girls and, and the guy that were actually involved in the murder you know, very much deserve to be in prison. But I think Manson's uh, sentence was a little excessive for the actual crime he was convicted of. Yeah. In fairness, you know, just on a purely objective level, you know, because obviously I don't condone the Manson murders. But <coughs> I think it's, it's, a, it's a strange thing about mm -hmm. scapegoating. And uh, that, that's why, you know, I found drawn to it in, in such a way um, because I always get approached by people to uh, donate or perform for things like Amnesty International and things like that and, and I don't because I feel like when in America you know there's problems to be addressed it's not my job to be fighting yeah. for, for other people's problems as well Is, um, is Manson's time actually up? I mean should He's been inside for what? Uh, he'll, well, he'll never be released. Yeah. But, uh, and, and I don't think he really should, and I don't think he wants to be. I think he, he, he belongs in prison because it's, it's where he grew up, you know? But it, sometimes it's kind of, it's kind of disappointing that, you know, he, the simple request of wanting a guitar that they won't give him, you know? So he, no, I don't have a desire to because, mm -hmm. you know, I think it's, it's just something that doesn't interest me, but just as a cultural phenomenon, mm. I think it's, it's a very important part of American culture to understand how someone like him relates to someone like Marilyn Monroe, and that, that's obviously, you know, the source of why I created the band and so much that I wanted to say about American culture. Mm. Are you familiar with the story about Marilyn Manson and Dennis Wilson? I mean, Charles Manson, Dennis Wilson. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, yes, yes. Have you heard Cease to Exist? Yes. That's a great song. It's just a, such a bizarre story. <coughs> he had him living in his house for, you know, these, these orgies going on, and Brian Wilson at the same time was going completely out of his mind. Yes. Yes, you know, well, it's, uh, like I said, you know, certain people, you know, end up being the, the scapegoat, you know, when... Yeah, there's always more to the story than, than, than the world wants you to know. Mm.